No way, man! The river's out of bounds! The monster's choking it! That was all hot and spray! I thought we just started over! Dude, you're hot, fair and square! No way, oh yeah! Man, hot, man, hot! One, two, three! One, two, three! One, two, three! Oh, not fair! Oh yeah, it is! Are you always kidding, Will? How much was that? 178? 177. I'd say you can forget 300. Uh, 177 seconds. But when I started, I could only do 33. That's because when you started, Clay, you were only five years old. That doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. Oh, it's getting light. I better hurry. Hey, you got until the end of the fair to make it to 300. Just keep practicing. That's what I'm talking about, going for the record. Sunshine. Already? Yep, already. Oh, yeah. Promise I pinned the fence, didn't I? Hourly for the past six weeks. <sighs> well, you know, the fair starts today. You should have thought about that six weeks ago. You can't keep breaking your word, Will. It shows bad character. It's not like I'm trying to break it. Good. I just want to move it. It's not even for me. It's for Cousin Clayton. He needs me. No, Will. Oh, come on, please. No. All right. But you're the one who's going to tell Cousin Clayton, not me. What about Clayton? Well, I promised him I'd practice with him. He has his heart set on winning the Hold Your Breath competition this year, and he needs me. You know, Clay, he's got trouble with confidence. How long? To paint the fence? To help your cousin Clayton. Well, we're gonna need to practice, and we'll probably have to check out the competition at the fair. Are you making up this story just to get out of painting this fence? Aunt Bertie, I would never do that. Yes, you would, Will. Tomorrow, you are painting the fence. No problem.
pretty steep, Will. I don't think we want to go down that. Yeah, we do. just three dollars you get a chance to break the fair record of 299 seconds and win this beautiful brand new dirt bike come on who's next now who out there thinks that they can break this fair record who wants to win it can you win it who can hold their breath for 200 seconds who can hold their breath for 300 seconds that's right ladies and gentlemen guess the amount of pennies in the big jar and you could win twenty-five thousand dollars in American Ego Gold Coins. <laughs> That's right. Just fill out the form with your best guest. Hand it to my lovely assistant, Benita. Say hello to Kyle Bonita. And you could win $25,000 in gold. How about a little girl? How about you? Ask your mother for $5 for your college education. <laughs> there you go. Ah, uh, thank you, Mom. Go on, little girl, and follow me. <laughs> just kidding, folks. Just kidding. Next sucker, please. That's the way, try it again. How you doing, Will? Hey, Coach. No offense, but I'm still not gonna play. <laughs> You're a tough cookie. <laughs> Thanks. But you're stupid not to go out for quarterback. You know why I'm not playing. Listen to me. Don't let some idiotic loyalty get in the way of your future. I know. I was you once. <laughs> Isn't that your girl over there Phil's having fun with? No, nope, just a neighbor. Hey, look. If she's just a neighbor, you won't mind Phil there winning her a couple of those little snuggly teddy bears. Maybe Phil get a little snuggle of his own. You want to what I got? Yep. Come on. You want that one, right? Yep. That's one Why don't you there. win that girl a bear? For what? Everybody loves a winner, Will. <laughs> Come on. Show that girl what you got. You're not afraid, are you? I've got us a couple of corn dogs, Will. Hey, Coach. Why don't you ask your talented cousin here what he thinks you should do? Ask me what? <laughs> I'm Philly!
Hi. Um, Hi. I wanted to invite you to my birthday party. Say, I have one for you, too. Is Phil gonna be there? What? It's no sweat off me if you like Phil, okay? I don't care. I don't like Phil. Yeah, right. I don't. Well, look, it's no big deal if you do. It is a big deal, otherwise you wouldn't be acting like such a jerk. Come to my party or don't. No, I'm the one who doesn't care. You think this means I can't go either? Shut up, Clay. I've been looking all over for you guys. You're not gonna believe what I heard. It happened over in Clarksville about six months ago. See this kid, Eddie Maxwell, and his older brother, Steve? Snuck into the fair after it was closed. See, Steve was just trying to do something nice for his little brother. So he strapped Eddie into that chair. See the one that's taped off? Dude, that's why they don't let anyone use it anymore. What happened? Well, first Eddie kept shouting, Go faster! Go faster! Steve didn't really know what he was doing. So, first we went faster, then too fast. And then Eddie started screaming, Make it stop! Make it stop! And Steve hit buttons and pulled levers, but no matter how much he tried, he couldn't get the Ferris wheel to stop. But then Steve must have found the right button, because the Ferris wheel stopped dead. And Eddie, he was like catapulted right out of his seat. And when he came down, he went straight through the roof of that haunted house right over there. And you know what else? He's still in there. Who? Eddie Maxwell. No way. Way. He never found his body. At night, everyone's gone. And Maxwell haunts that house for real. How do you know? My brother Toby's friend Michael, whose sister's boyfriend is the guy Keith, he knows. He saw Eddie Maxwell last night. If Eddie Maxwell is really in that house, I gotta see him. Why? Don't you want to be able to say that we saw a ghost? No? Night, guys. Night. Well? This will be waiting for you in the morning. Can you turn off the light, Clay? This is clear. Come on. <sighs> okay. No ghost. Let's go home. Hey, it's just a cat. Yeah, a cat in the ghost chair. Dude, I'm leaving. What's that? Huh? I swear I just heard something. Wow. You see that? You know what they say. If you catch an owl staring directly at you, it means death is near. Oh, well, then that's great. That means Eddie Maxwell is definitely in there. How do you know it's not our death that's near? Clayton, we just hid in a porta potty for three hours. There's no way I'm turning back now. Come on, let's go.
this way. David Copperfield. What'd you do? Paint the numbers on here yourself? You're just have a little bit on a bad luck. I can't see. Who is it? It's Coach Joe and Mr. Potter. And Betsy's dad. He's drunk. One, you are not getting the dime of my money. And two, by tomorrow, everyone in this town is gonna know you for that cheat you are. I still can't really see. See, what are they doing? He's taking Betsy's dad's gun. Don't you think we should tell somebody? Like who, Clay? I don't know, the police? Uh, no. No, definitely not. That's only gonna lead us to trouble. Number one, we are supposed to be at home in bed. Aunt Bertie will ground me until I'm like 40. Number two, uh, we were trespassing. We could go to jail. And number three, if Coach Joe finds out we saw it, he'll kill us too, Clay. Like he killed Mr. Potter. I didn't see him. Oh, okay, so he's gonna kill me. That make you feel any better? A little. <sighs> yeah. Maybe Mr. Potter wasn't even hurt that bad. Uh, he could be at the hospital right now, recovering. Maybe. You know, I bet somebody heard the gunshot. You know what? I bet Coach Joe was being arrested right now, and all of this wouldn't even matter. I bet that could happen. Yeah, exactly. So, 
Why would we get ourselves in a whole bunch of trouble over what could be nothing? <sighs> All right, let's make a pact. We won't tell anybody anything until we find out exactly what happened. Green? Pact? Pact. <sighs> You're sure you saw what you saw, right? I wouldn't lie to you, Clay. Well, Clayton, wake up. Did you two sneak out last night after I went to bed? Sneak out? Why are you answering a question with a question? Did you or didn't you? <sighs> no. There's someone here to see you, Officer Johnson. Come downstairs, quick as you can. Quick, fellas. Hey, guys. Sorry if I woke you up. It's okay. What's going on at Betsy's house? There was a robbery last night at the fair. Somebody stole that $25,000 in gold coins. Robbery? Yep. Wow. I was hoping you guys might have seen something, heard something. I know you were at the fair yesterday. You can get that if you want. I'm just about done here. All right, then. I'll be right inside. We uh, left early to go swimming. So Jimmy says you guys were going back to the fair last night. We were, we were gonna do that, but, uh, you know, Clay got a little scared, and Aunt Bertie wanted us home by dark, so. So you didn't see anything? Sorry. It's a shame, you know, the fair put up a thousand dollar reward for anybody who might have seen something. Thousand dollars? Bet you guys could have used that. Yeah, but too bad we weren't there. Wish we were. You think Judge Ramos stole the gold? Well, it's not the gold we're worried about. You guys give us a call if anything pops in your head, okay? Yeah. Do that is that what you heard no no oh no 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 judge ramos is not being arrested he's being questioned but they definitely think that he killed mr potter his gun was found at the scene near the body but the judge doesn't remember anything that happened and helen said that he climbed into bed around 4 a.m oh the coach joe was playing there too but he went home early leaving judge ramos and mr potter alone there at least that's what he's saying Oh, please, everybody knows that Judge Ramos is a drunk with a gun and a gambling problem. Mark my words, it will be just a matter of time before they arrest him. Poor Betsy, she's going to be heartbroken. What are we going to do? I think we should go back to Officer Johnson and tell him the truth. Sure, Clay. 
You know, it's not like we just swore up and down that we weren't at the fair and we didn't hear any gunshots and stuff like that. Did you see Coach Joshu, Mr. Potter? No, but you did. Okay, then it's just gonna be my word against his. Who do you think they're gonna believe? I can say that I saw it too. Thanks, but, you know, we lied to Aunt Bertie and the police. They're only gonna call us liars. We are liars, Will. What we need to do is get some proof. What kind of proof? The gold. Yeah, Coach Joe killed Mr. Potter, then took the gold and framed Judge Ramos for it. If, if we could find the gold, we could prove that. That would be cool. Yeah, it'd be great. It'd be like a treasure hunt. I'd get to save Betsy's dad and we'd split the reward. All right, I'm in. But I do have one question. Hmm. How are we going to find the gold? We'll just follow Coach Joe until it leads us right to it. This is gonna work. Count for me. No. Oh, come on! You're dead! You gotta catch me first! Room in here. Mind if I say a few words before service? Feel free to. Yeah. Hi. Reverend McCarthy said I could say a few words before service. Thank you, Reverend. I know all of you know what happened with my dad, and I know what you're thinking. My dad's a good person. He might drink a little. Maybe he drinks a lot. And yes, he gambles, sometimes too much, and my mom gets mad at him. But my father is a good person who would never hurt anyone. So just all of you stop your gossiping and whispering and thinking we're ashamed. We are not ashamed. When the truth comes out that my dad didn't do it all you think he did, you're the ones who are going to be ashamed. So you can all take your prayers today and ask God to forgive you.
You sure said he was going fishing, right? That's what he said. All right. expect him to do, Clay? Carry it around in a sack with a dollar sign on it? Come on, let's go! What are we gonna do, Will? Well, I think we gotta just wait until he comes out. I could take forever. Will. Stop shushing me. Nerd. <laughs> you wanna get home? Stay here, and if he leaves, follow him. Wait a minute. I don't want to follow him. Not by myself. Okay, then I'll follow him, and you go look for the bag. I don't want to go for the bag. Okay, then I'll follow him, and I'll go for the bag. That'd be impressive. Look, I'm gonna go back to the house, okay? And if he starts to head back, 
Find out some way to warn me. How? You know what, Clay? I don't know. It's your turn to think of something. Is that you, Joe? Yeah. Is that you, Joe? Oh, 
is in here now? I want to know. My guy. Still here. We no, just pick him up after practice. Wait, wait, for practice. All right. Are you running or dancing? Because dancing is better. Oh, hey, Clay, I gotta go. If that's I mean, yeah, I'll just I'll call you right back. Oh. Hey. Hi. I want to thank you for what you did at church. You know, sitting with us. Yeah. No, no, it was no problem. You know, it was actually Aunt Birdie's idea, but um, your dad's a good guy. Jimmy Johnson says you and Clayton were at the fair the night Mr. Potter was killed. Is that true? You know, Jimmy keeps saying that to everyone. And no, no, of course, we were not there, but you know Jimmy he loves making up stories. Why would anybody do that? I was just hoping that maybe you saw something. You know, if you were there. Coach is the only one who could have killed Mr. Potter. I don't understand why the police are believing his lies. You having second thoughts about coming out for the team? No, sir. Just watch him. Just coming down to watch practice because you hate football. I never said I hate football. It's not too late to change your mind. You know, it's not too late to change your mind either. You know, Clayton is good enough to make second string at least. I don't have a spot for Clayton. You know why you don't have a spot? It's because there's too many rich kids on your team whose parents donate money. But you know as well as I do that Clayton doesn't suck half as bad as some of these kids. That's why you're not playing? Because Clayton didn't make the team. You want to give Will and I a moment? See you later. Yeah. Well, let's get our cards right up on top of the table. OK. You didn't come down here to watch practice because you like seeing other people play. Why are you really here? You got me, Coach. I've been down here waiting for Betsy. I'd really appreciate it if you didn't tell, though, because Phil liking her and all. OK. No hard feelings. You're a smart kid, Will. Tough cocky. I'm a little tough myself. Smart, too. That's why you and I get along, right? We both know what we want. We're not afraid to go after it. 
with me, Will? All the way, Coach. You remember that, and you'll be all right. I think I know where the gold is. Coach Joe buried the gold and then wrote the number 18 on his hand so he wouldn't forget. I don't know, Will. You don't just scribble the number 18 on your hand. You scribble the square root of 2060, maybe. You scribble a number with a decimal point, maybe. But not the number 18. No, Clay, it has to be on the 18-yard line. Oh. The number just rised. Right here, yeah. Yeah, easy, easy. Just go for it. <clears throat> no, right over there. In the middle. <clears throat> no, wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. I thought I thought. Ah, cool. Silver dollar. <laughs> wow. Great. Only 24,999 more to go. <sighs> Sorry. Should be around here. I have a feeling. Feeling's getting close. This is it. This is it. No, Clay, pay attention. This is it. Come on, right here. Here, stop, stop, stop. Just, just give me it, just give me it. Let me show you how to do it. This is how a real man does it. Oh, oh no, oh, oh, that was so oh, cool. I can't, Will. Get out of here. We forgot the tool. His fingerprints were the only ones found on the gun. Ballistics came back a match. That's how you say it, Margaret. Ballistics came back a match. Don't criticize me because I watch television. Use your common sense. The judge was the only other person in the room when Mr. Plotter was killed. No, no, no. Coach Joe was with someone else that night. They swore to it. I don't know who, but I just know that Coach Joe has an airtight alibi. Yes. No, Margaret. Margaret, knock it off. What do you mean? What do you think he's doing? Buying liquor? Hmm. Maybe. The number got washed off his hand, and he can only remember where the gold is buried when he's drunk. OK, well, if you're so smart, what does the number 18 mean? Here's a radical thought. He's a football coach. It's a football play. Here he comes. Keep your eyes on him.
wonder who she is. Maybe it's his mother. She's really weird. She's crazy. She tried to kill me with her blind lady cane. You see what I see? Yeah. No, the number's on the mailbox. 18, Riverbank Road. Oh, Clay, that's great. That means the gold's definitely in there. What gold? What gold are you talking about? Shh. What gold are you talking about? Keep it down. You were there, weren't you? Just like Jimmy Johnson said, you were there that night at the fair. That's why you're falling, Coach Joe. And you didn't say anything because you wanted the reward money, right? No. For once in your life, we'll tell the truth. Were you guys there? Did you see what happened? No. Yes. <gasps> Ow! It's your fault my father's in jail. You could have just told the truth and everything would have been fine. But you don't know how to do that, do you? You can go to the police. No, no, you can't. Why not? Because they won't believe you. OK, OK, yes. Clay and I were at the fair that night. But only I saw Coach Joe kill Mr. Potter. It's true. I tried to see, but I got scared by a flying dummy. OK, so now we're going to the police, and you're going to tell them that. No. It'll be my word against Coach's. And he's an alibi. Someone to say that Coach was with him when Potter got killed. And it's probably his mother. I don't know how she would have seen him. Even if he was with her. What? She's blind. And crazy. That's her house, number 18. So? When you left the football field yesterday, Coach and I shook hands, and he had 18 written on his. It's a clue. So ever since then, Clay and I have been following him. All he's really done alone is fish and visit his mother in that house. Look, if you want to save your dad, you'll stick with my plan. What plan? I think the gold is in that house under a trap door. If we can find it, then we can prove Coach Joe stole it. But if Coach Joe's in there, how are you going to get to it? Tomorrow's the bicentennial, right? All you have to do is follow him the whole day, OK? Early in the morning, Clay and I will sneak under the house and take the gold before he comes back. Will, today is the day. You mean the bicentennial? No, but if you work hard and fast, maybe you won't miss the whole thing. Oh, Aunt Bertie, I'm really sorry, but I cannot paint the fence today. Believe me, it's a matter of life and death. That's right, Will, it is, because if you don't paint that fence, your life as you know it is over. Seriously, you want me to do... Paint. In all truth, you want me to... Paint, just as I said. Go on. Doing. You can paint better than that. I've seen you do it. I'm doing the best I can. You're not. Yeah, I am. Give me the brush. <sighs> OK, this is how you do it. I'll show you how. OK. Now, you go up and down with the grain. No streaks, no smudges. And then, when you get to the edges, you turn the paintbrush. So dumb.
You go knock on the front door. And then what? I don't know. Make believe you're selling magazines or something. I don't have any magazines. But she won't know that, Clay. She's blind. Then why did we just hide from her when she looked this way? Clay, just keep her at the front door long enough for me to sneak in through the window, find the trap door, and get the gold. What am I supposed to say, Will? Please, blind lady, don't beat me with your blind lady cane. My cousin's just trying to steal from you. Just keep her at the front door and everything will be fine. This looks like a great place to drop anchor. Can I do it, Uncle John? Can I do it? You can't drop anchor, Faith. It's too heavy. I tell you what, why don't you read me that depth gauge? Okay, are you ready? Go for it. One dot six. <laughs> Look again, sweetie. I think you're reading it upside down. Okay, you're right. Nine dot one. Well, that's better. Banging on my door. Um, Who's there? Um, uh, I can't hear you. Um, uh, did you come in? Hi, ma'am. What? What? Uh, Get with it. Uh, sorry to bother you on such a lovely day. I. Uh, uh, what do you want? Oh, no. I'm. It's I all right. I don't care. I, my magazines. I don't want magazines! How can I hear magazines? What do I need with magazines? Do, do you, Just get out of here, okay? Just do, get out of here. You, you know your cat is dead? That? What cat? <sighs> get out! All right, girls, time for a break. We gotta get out of here! You're supposed to be at the door distracting her! It's not my fault. She has a dead cat in her arms. She doesn't even know she has a cat. This is not a good thing, Will. It's too late, Clay. Come on! Look at there! 
More than being chased around and shot at by a crazy blind lady. More than having my foot stuck in a vent and Betsy swinging an axe at it. I hate rats more than Coach Joe trying to kill us. Not so much I hate rats. We have to go to the police. They won't believe us. Officer Johnson will. He thinks we were there that night anyway. No, what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to get back under that house and look for the gold. We searched for the gold, Will. It's not there. No, no, we did not look. It's all concrete down there. Where would it be? I, I don't know. A, a, a secret passage. A secret passage? There's no secret passage, Will. Well, how do you know? Because I know where the gold is. What? You said that the whole time you watched Coach Joe, all he did was fish and visit his mom. Yeah? You saw the number 18 on his hand, but you were looking at it upside down. If he wrote it on his hand, it would have looked like this. 8.1 feet. It's the depth of the river where he hid the gold. Betsy, that's brilliant. All we need to do now is go to where Coach Joe fishes and find where the river is exactly 8.1 feet. What? 
tried it your way. We're going to Officer Johnson. Clay, will, will you tell her, please? Clay? First, we lied to Aunt Birdie. And we lied to Officer Johnson. We even lied to Betsy. Tired of all the lying, Will. Little lies lead to big lies. And the bigger lies lead to bigger, bigger lies that I don't even understand anymore. Maybe you don't want to go to Officer Johnson because you want to be the hero. Like always. Is that what you really think? I don't know. I just know that we have to save Betsy's dad. And that I don't want to see another rat again for the rest of my life. I'm going to Officer Johnson. Fine, then go. Never even got a chance to win it. We'll get another bike, Clayton. It's not about the bike. It's about being the best at something. You're the best at a lot of things. Will is too. I've never been the best at anything. There's always next year. I think so. We better go. So you burn my dark bike back? Yeah, thanks. What are you doing with this loser? You gonna let him stop you from having a good time? Like you stop Will from playing on the team? Come on, let's go. Wait, what are you talking about? Don't act like you don't know. Will's not playing because you suck too much to make the team. Is that true? You're a jerk, Phil. Come on. Hey, can we get a ride? Only if you can make it. Remember, just tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. Listen to me, Margaret. I just spoke to Joan. She says Officer Johnson swears that Coach Joe was having drinks at his house during the time of the murder. Yes, Officer Johnson is Coach Joe's alibi. No one else could have done it. Had to be Judge Ramos. Yes, Margaret. Why won't you ever believe a word I say? Margaret, you're driving me crazy. You said that we could come to you with anything. What's on your mind? We have proof that my dad's innocent. Really? Well, that's good news for your dad. We also know where the stolen gold is. You know what, Officer? 
Patrick Johnson yet, are you? Yeah. Don't tell him anything. He's Coach Joe's alibi. That means he's in on it. I'll let you tell Betsy. Hello? Don't tell him anything. Maybe I have to talk in five minutes. Okay. You said you had proof of your dad's innocence. Right. Okay, I know this is gonna be hard to believe, but... Betsy, tell him. We... Me and Clayton... Clayton and I... have absolute and irrefutable proof that... there's... a... secret passage. A secret passage? Right. In the haunted house. And... Thieves. Thieves? Thieves from a foreign country. Uh, went through the secret passage. Stole Judge Ramos's gun. Shot Mr. Potter. And then stole the gold. Great. Right. I think you should take them down to the station and get an official statement. Yeah, I think we should do that. No, really. We really have to go. But, um, we'd appreciate you looking into the... The secret passage? Right. <laughs> Ooh, now that we got that off our chest, how about we swim back to shore, Betsy? They're gonna take the gold and they're gonna hide it someplace else. We have to get to it first. Right. What do you think? Let's do it. All right, get on. Okay, Betsy, I'm gonna need you to find your Uncle John. Tell him what to be at the place where Coach Joe fishes. It's about a quarter mile upstream from his mother's house. You got it? Got it. Well, yeah. Thanks. Hey, look, I'm really sorry I lied. You know what? Maybe if I just would have told the truth from the beginning, I wouldn't have got us into all of this. Can you guys kiss and make up later? Look. Find your Uncle John. Okay.
Okay, so Coach Joe was fishing somewhere around here, right? Right. But how do we know where it's 8.1 feet deep? Well, that's what the hammer and rope are for. Mm. Right. Will? What? Is it true you didn't join the team because I suck? Clay, you're my best friend. They don't want you, they don't want me. Now you gotta get the gold. You think you can do it? I'm not coming up without it. All righty. Here, hold on to this. I've had it since the last fair. Now at least I'll get a chance to use it. Go!
Thank you all for being here to celebrate my daughter Betsy's birthday. I'd also like to say a few words to some of the people that are here with us today about all the support that you've shown my family through this whole ordeal and uh, how happy I am to really be home. Enjoy. Oh, I um, also want to say how glad I am to uh, let you know that this here in my cup is apple juice. Ah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Betsy. Thanks. Uh, where did Will go? Oh. Huh? What a day for a daydream. What a day for a daydreaming boy. And I'm lost in a daydream Dreaming about my bundle of joy and Even if time ain't really on my side It's one of those days for taking a walk outside I'm blowing the day to take a walk in the sun And I fall on my face on somebody's new moon lawn It's what a day for a daydream Custom made for a daydream boy and Now I'm lost in a daydream Dream about my bundle of joy and Even if time is passing me by a lot I couldn't care less about the dues you say I got Tomorrow I'll pay the dues for dropping my load A pie in the face for being a sleepy bull toe what a day for a daydream What a day for a daydream
get that gold I found a place to start